as I've gotten more experience working with Weebly, I've found some cool tips and tricks. So I wanted to put this video together to share a few. The first one I want to show you is the shortcut to work with your stats, blog comments, and form submissions. This isn't even in the website builder. It's out in your dashboard. So I'm going to exit the editor. When you first log into Weebly, you'll log, you'll land at your dashboard. And if you have more than one site, you'll see them listed here. Most of you probably just have one. I'm going to use my business level sample site as an example to show you the place where you can in one click reach this little area with some nice features. Uh, a quick look at your website stats, blog comments, and form submissions or form entries. Now website stats are, um, gosh, a fine art unto themselves, but uh, two of the most common metrics that people look at are page views and unique visitors. And Weebly gives you a nice little place to view these two types of metrics. There are many, many more, and you can access those using the free Google Analytics product offered by Google. You can very easily add that to your Weebly site. But this is just a nice way to get a sense of uh, your website visitors over time. This is a brand new site, so we just have a few. And some of these are probably spam bots and search engine robots and things. But over time, you'll have more data here. If I go back to that dashboard, we have the stats button, but also this more button. And this is where you can in one click reach the blog comments area, where if you had any comments, you could quickly approve or delete them or mark them as spam. And that will happen. You'll get lots of spam through your blog, unfortunately. And you can also reach through that more drop down your form entries. And this is particularly great if you have been having some problems with your email uh, and you think you might have missed some messages. When someone completes the contact form on your website, that message will be emailed to you, but it will also be cached on the site. So you can always log in and check this area if you think that you've been having some trouble with your email. And as you might have noticed, there are even some nice shortcut buttons between these three features right in this little area. So that's just a, a really nice way to quickly access some of the more common tasks that you'll perform with your site. I'm going to go into the site itself back into the editor because I also want to talk about some other tips and tricks. I'm just going to go to this little sample page I have set up. People sometimes uh, ask me what browsers are best to use. Now, in a perfect world, it wouldn't matter, but the fact of the matter is that I do recommend Chrome or Firefox in working with your Weebly site. In my experience using all of the different browsers, those are the most reliable and they tend to be the fastest, uh, particularly Chrome, and the least likely to get boggled. So, it is pretty common when you're using uh, Weebly to just encounter times when the system slows down or even crashes completely and your site just freezes. Uh, to prevent that from happening, I do recommend using Chrome and I also recommend going slowly. Uh, let me click over to, uh, let's see, well, I, let me give you an example of just kind of starting to move things around in here. Uh, when you're working in your Weebly site, Weebly is actually building your website on the fly. And there's a lot going on behind the scenes. When you start to really throw a lot at it, it can get slower and slower and really get boggled. If you find that you've been moving around a lot, like here's an example. I just moved this column guide over, but the button isn't uh, resizing properly. It usually just means that it's time to slow down, let the system catch up. If you get a module that's frozen, frozen or not formatting correctly, it may be time to just delete that little item and then re-add a fresh version, version that hasn't been uh, boggled by too many changes all at once. So that covers going slowly and uh, deleting the module and re-adding it. Sometimes that's just needed. 
Now images do a lot of cool things in the site and I wanted to show you, uh, let's go to the about page, just a little trick that a lot of people don't uh, realize about working with images. When you have a standalone image, you can grab the handle in the top of the uh, module and drag an image right into a uh, text box. We've talked about this in an earlier video. But uh, if you want to reposition that image to the right side or whichever other side, uh, one way you can do that is by clicking on the image, going to advanced and changing the, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, here it is. The position you can do that from left to right and that'll move it over to the other side. But there's an easier way to do that, which is simply to grab the image within its nested text box and move it around. Pretty cool. If you want to put more than one image into a, uh, a block of text and wrap it, you need to grab a second text module and add the image to that second module. There isn't a way to have more than one image in one text area. Okay, the other thing that I've been asked about that I thought I'd mention is that you have some blog sharing um, uh, so I should say social media sharing uh, buttons built right into the blog. These are for your readers to share your articles to their fans on Facebook. It's not a way to link your website to your own business Facebook page or your Twitter profile. Uh, if you don't want to include these, you can turn them off in the blog settings area. If we go to blog settings, these are called post share buttons. You can just turn them off. If you only want to provide one of those to your users, you can click customize and uncheck whichever one you don't want to display. But uh, you might as well just leave them on. They're kind of handy for your users and it might help your blog get shared, your articles get shared more widely in social media. If you did want to link your website to your uh, different social media profiles, I recommend adding links to uh, your footer or your contact page. Um, we typically downplay these because we want people to come into our site rather than quickly leave. So uh, providing those social links out is a good thing to do, but you don't want that to be a super prominent feature of your site. Okay, one last item that I wanted to cover. It's kind of a review, but uh, I've had people ask about how to remove links. And so I just wanted to show that quickly here. Uh, if you have provided a link like, uh, actually, let me say uh, view details. So if you have some text and you're just creating a link to some other site, we can select our text use the link tool and we'll just type in some nonsense thing here like uh, Mashable, one of my favorite tech sites, .com. Uh, open in a new window, that's always a best practice and we actually do have to put in the HTTP colon slash slash before there. Okay. And if we published that, it goes out to the live website and say that we uh, realize, oh, we made the wrong link or we didn't want a link there. How do you remove that? Well, it sometimes takes a little mousing skill, but you want to just click on the link itself. And it's not a double click. It's kind of like a light single click, but you should get this blue pop up that gives you the uh, place to click on the link and change or remove it. So removing it is what we want to do there. Just kind of click off of it to make it so. So that's how to remove a link. So those are just uh, seven quick tips based on questions I've gotten lately. I'll share more of them in the future as I collect them. Thanks. <music>